Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the program, and we have to see any space when they say tribute. So it's about 10 minutes to talk up, and I guess somebody will want to say something about that time. So we're giving you some time, 10 minutes, so it's about 5 minutes past two o'clock, probably. We start getting up to the field or something. So, so if it is anyone right now who want to say anything concerning that like the opportunity is yours, take it out.
There's a man who had called me uncle. And I'm going to sing a song this afternoon. And I hope you bless your heart. Then tell a child after you come down. Why let you be down all over Why the runners live in a bound never molesting doing
are going to do a tribute song and we have a Larry. I have known Lazai for a good time. Lazai loves to take yeah. care of all people and he's going to church. He always wants to make sure that they reach him. My heart can sing.
Great supermarket. And yes.
future goes in the future home. Again, good afternoon to each and everyone. We're here today to celebrate with all the heavy loving for the lasso. And here we used to work mostly together to support each other this morning. So everything went down well. So we're no longer delaying. We're so happy to start now. On behalf of the brothers of, and sisters of the Grace and True Why St. Vincent we give our condolences to the, the family of Brother Lazo. Lazo. May God continue to be with us.
you are a friend. I experienced that. On that same visit to his house, I have to smile now. He called his wife and he said, Larry, come get my name something. I said, man, relax inside. You don't need anything. Believe it or not, Mary started to cry. Because I was refusing to take something from him. Today I'm happy that I took from him on that day the gift that he wanted to give me. Something from his heart. A free gift of love. A man who gives free. I imagine everyone inside here would know Marius the plain talker. If he has something to tell you, you can go to heaven, come back, descend into hell. Once he meets you face to face, he is going to tell you himself. And today, that makes that man, to my mind, a happy man in his lifetime. And when he finishes telling you, he will say, Me hold an enemy in I don't tell you what I have to tell you. I ain't holding nothing against you. And today, this is the type of life and memory that we all celebrate. A man of free speech. And finally, I would like us to remember him as a friend. We all remember him as a friend. For me, he's a friend and a person who I will never forget. Never forget. He is unforgettable. Unforgettable. I'm sometimes getting emotional about this guy. I started a small snack at the business in Lenin. And every day, Morris goes to town and come back. He will stop at the shop. Every day. Once he passes and goes to town, on his way back, he will stop. And he will stop. He will buy lunch, and not for himself only, but even the people who work within the shop. He will say, today, lunch is on me. I leave this lunch for the boss. Make sure he collect it. And that tells me again that here is a man who is loving, who was loving, who was kind, free-handed, and free-spirited. Today, let us remember Morris for who you know him as, and if what I said reminded you of anything of him, please remember him. Thank you. Amen. 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 Now the tribute by Mr. Cooper, and after the tribute by Cooper, the Grace and Truth Sisters will come in with their rendition. Pleasant afternoon to each and everyone. Oh, we sound so dull. Good afternoon, each and everyone. That is much better. Come on, even though we we moaning, we can be more brighter than that. Yes. yes. All right. My name is Warren Cooper Matthew. Cooper is just a plain name, but everybody calls me Cooper, Mr. Cooper. It doesn't matter. A rose gone by any other name is just a sweet. So. Cooper is okay, go on and not go is okay. So on behalf of my family, I would like to extend um, our deepest condolences to the entire region. Family, be we family, Larry Lynn and company, and the others here in St. Vincent, I guess, Southern Canada, overseas, wherever they may be. Larry Lynn has asked me to say a word or two, a few words on behalf of our fallen husband. Morris is someone I got to know from since I was with the Barney Secondary School many, many moons ago. In those days, going to, to and from the Barney School, we have to walk to school from Leu to Barney and back. So
So most of the time on afternoon, walking back to Lego, we will meet Morris. I think he used to take care of candles between Peter So and Mountain. So from that, that time, we became real good friends, actually. And adding to that, he and I worship at the same Grace and Truth Church in Lady. So we even became closer. And as the chairman of National National Pass and Union, he was plying his trade at Mount Twain. So sometime when we go down here for a little outing, Morris is always there. And if you want something, you don't have any problem. Sometimes you don't have to have money. You just go to Morris and he's there to assist you. So over the years we became very close. And added to that, Larry Lane and family from Leu, we are very close at side of the family. She is my two of my sisters are um, sister. So we have that kind of relationship. So when they approach and ask me to do something for Morris, I could not tell you down. So Morris was a good guy in the community. And I know everybody here will attest to that. Free, loving, kind-hearted person. A hard worker. Always doing something, hustling. Doing this, have a shop, leave a shop, go to mountain, doing something else. And the business continues in, um, in Barry, Libya. So, I want to just urge the family to continue to trust God. Knowing that Morris would have made up, made up his mind, and he, no doubt, I think is going to a better place. A better place where the Lord has prepared for him, and those of us behind now have to work to go to that place where Moses has, has been preparing for us. So I want to tell the family stay strong. I know it's tough in these times. Stay strong. Hold on to the Almighty God, trust Him, and He will see you through this, through all of this. So, on behalf of myself and family, my deepest condolences, and may the good Lord continue to bless you all in time. Thank you. Grace and truth, sisters. Grace and truth, sisters. Baby. 
with him he could never want. And that is that is something we truly live by. Say, Rafi, if we get and we can give, I will give. I was speaking to his wife the other day and she told me a story just exactly about this. She said, Ah, oh, Rafi needs to go to church. I mean, I'm cooking all that. You know, this man, she hold for that food. And so, well, we expect that's him. He will come up and say, Now, man, you know, he's food done. And human heard he will not eat anything, but that's because he truly who he was. He will give all if he had. He, just like everyone, was not perfect. He had his flaws. Growing up, my father was calm and easygoing. But one thing about him, he will not be intimidated by anyone. I remember growing up, if you stood in his face, he would stand right back in your face. He was also very understanding and encouraging. When I came back in 2019, and we pulled up to the house on Glebe Hill, Babes, everything in my tap water, you know, it comes to God provided. I looked at him and I raised my glass to him. He was very hardworking and through the challenges that he faced, the dedication and the focus that he put into his work was truly admiring. His set for business was really one of a kind. From his work in Mustique to his work in Canada, from the hustle doing painting jobs going up, the start of the building, the building his houses, and by his vehicles, he had a good, a lifetime of good and bad experiences. And he was very grateful for it all. And he was also very hardworking and determined to make it for his family. We may all be grieving, but let us remember that this is God's plan. Just like the sir said, Mr. Nash, just before he died, he would say things like, you know, my time and come, Rafi, my time and come. My sister says, stop, say that, stop, say that. And in the end, he strongly believed that sometime before he was not there, he did not use to go to church. And he said, Rafi, it's important to be in tithes. I'm like, what? No, but church, why is it important? He was stuck by the church on day's tithes. He said, the scripture, it says, Honor thy Lord with your possessions, and the first week of all your increases. So your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with more wine. Before he passed, that he was a believer, a church goer, a member of the Great Central Church in Bayou, a Christian, a grandfather, a cousin, a husband, and most importantly, our father. When you ask him, you know, I didn't really know that I had so many brothers and sisters. Well, I know, but I didn't know the name. He said, Oh, let me tell you, let me tell you. <laughs> First one, Leah Doyle, Anita Douglas. Vandel, Samuel, Felicia Williams, Keisha Samuel, Kamal Williams, Jamal Williams, Nehemiah Samuel, Lelisha Lewis, and Lafisha Williams. He really wanted to do something for his 60th birthday, but we all have busy life and it's understandable that we could not make it. But the fact that we're all here, this whole 10 children, I know he's looking down on us smiling for granting his last wish. His last wish. You may want more time, but this is our final goodbye. It will remain forever in our hearts and our minds. If you don't mind, I'll just quote over his last prayer from my last book. He said, I thank our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth for there is nothing we can do ourselves. What we have or don't have, we must give thanks and give praises. We must give you the honor and the glory. We ask that you continue to help us on the path you have chosen for us. Help us carry on in your way. Let it be done in our hearts, our mind, our bodies, and our soul. In your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You will be great, great in this by me. Continue on your same and perfect peace. Amen. Before Brother Asso come to deal with the word, Brother Troy, one we read now, one of his choruses, before we're going to ask you to do the Let us all stand, please, as we sing the two choruses before you have the man of God. Jesus is going to prepare a man chance for him. So let us all stand as we put our hands together one more time again. Jesus is going to prepare.
I would not have you to be ignorant. And this message today is not focusing on Brother Morris Williams. It is a message for you and for me. It is a message for us who are alive. And I want us to look at three very important lessons. First, the concern. C as in concern. Secondly, the consolation. C as in consolation. And the third lesson is comfort. As See as in comfort. And I want, I am appealing to those who are outside to listen soberly at the message today. Because I want to tell you that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming again. And perhaps today might be our last day on earth. And what is the life without Jesus Christ? The concern. There was a church, and I want us to see, to look at the church. A church in a place called Thessalonica. There were Christians in the church. Brothers and sisters were in the church. But something was happening which caused a concern. Old brothers were dying, old sisters were dying, some young ones were dying because of illness and so on. And so there was a concern. The Christians in the church in Thessalonica had a concern. And the concern was what will become of those people who are dead? What will become of those in the church, that old man who has died, that old lady who has died, that young child who has died, what will become of them? The news of this concern came to a man who was like the, the superintendent of the churches, a man by the name of the Apostle Paul. And when Paul heard the concern, he had to intervene. And the scripture says, verse 13, but I would not have you to be ignorant. He was speaking to the members of the church in Thessalonica. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them who are asleep. And yes, sleep means death. That he saw or not, even as others who have no hope. I want you to understand today that every single one of us have some concerns in our lives. Many of us are not even sure that if we die today, where we are going. Sometimes our children die tragically and we have a concern, where is that child going to end up? Our husband died and we are concerned about where is he going to end up. And so human beings have uh, concerns. And the church of Thessalonica was no different. The church had uh, a concern. And so the Apostle Paul had to write 
a letter to the church. And he says to them, I would not have you to be ignorant concerning them who are them. That is sorry not. Even as others who have no hope. And dear friends, this evening, we all have to bear in mind that life is filled with sorrow. Life is filled with hopelessness. And when it comes to the child of God, or when it comes to that man or woman who has given his or her life to God, God has a message for them. Paul says, that is sorrow not. The child of God is not there to be sorrowful. And I believe that when a brother, brother Williams was on the very brink of the path in this world, he was not in a state of sorrow. Mr. Nash spoke about him. And he says that even in that state of, of going home, that transitioning to another life, he was ready to say, Take something from me. He was ready to say, I am leaving this world. How many of us can say that? How many of us can simply say that I am leaving this world? Today, the Apostle Paul says, Hopelessness. For anyone is when you die not knowing Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. There is where sorrow comes. And my our grief is always going to be when our, when our children do not come to know Jesus Christ. When our family members do not come to know Christ. That is painful. No matter how much intelligence that boy or that girl has, or that man or that woman has, or how much money you have accumulated, and your life is without God, your life is a life without hope. And I want you to understand this because our world today is in a state of hopelessness. A nation like Israel woke up on Saturday morning to find that the southern part of Israel is overrun by their neighbors who are their enemies. Men and women, the, the, the Prime Minister Netanyahu, he went to bed, not even knowing what was going to happen the next day. That is the state of our world today. Without God and without hope. I want us to move on to the second lesson and that's the consolation. I thank God that we have a God who is loving, he is kind, and God is reaching out to us even in the state of our sorrows and our hopelessness. And this is why the Lord Jesus died on the cross of Calvary to bring hope to lost and dying men and women like you and I. And so the Apostle Paul writes, 
verse 14. Here comes the consolation. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them who also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Brother Williams' book is now closed. His entry into his shop is now closed. Coming to grace and truth, whether it is in Leu or in Barley or in Kingston or in Chevrolet, is already closed. But the Apostle Paul says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even to them who also sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. I thank God that this man, I believe that he honestly gave his heart and his life to Jesus Christ. We were having a crusade in Leo, and it was at that crusade in Leo, it was told and he informed one or two of the brothers that he was not feeling well that night. And that crusade had been in the past for a couple months now, and so he had time to give, to surrender his all to Jesus Christ. Some of us will not have that privilege, my dear friends. But in had the time, and I believe that in the, in the very core of his heart, he had a desire for God. Yes. God knows our weaknesses. I am not going to say that I'm a perfect man. But there is a God who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities to the person of Jesus Christ. He knows what so temptations mean for he has spent the sin. The Lord Jesus knows about my sorrows. He knows about my hopelessness at times. But the consolation is if you believe in Jesus Christ, if you, have, if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, if you embrace the Lord Jesus Christ, and you give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, you are a man or a woman with hope and confidence. And so the Apostle Paul went on to say, for we for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. That we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord Jesus shall not precede those who are asleep. My dear friends today and brothers and sisters and listeners, Jesus Christ is coming again. And I, many of us are looking forward for the arrival of the Lord Jesus any time now. The world leaders have been making their announcements and, and their predictions that there is going to be a third world war by the, by, the, by the end of 2027. Well, that is what they say. It may just come a little closer. But if a world war is to take place, I want to say to you, the Lord Jesus would have come before that. And what is he coming to do? He is coming to take his blood brought people out of this world to go with himself to glory. That is my hope. This is the hope that I have. Many nights I go before I go to my bed or in the coolness of the day, I say to the Lord, Lord, remember me. If you come today, make sure you take this old man home with you. Brother yes. um, Williams and I, we are age group. Age group. 
disciple that been there. But I want to say to you that there is consolation, there is encouragement in the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ is coming again. And those who die in Christ shall be risen in Christ. If the Lord Jesus comes today, Brother Williams will be going up to meet the Lord Jesus. Amen. Fred Boy will be coming back and he will be going back to meet the Lord Jesus in the air. All those saints who have died, they will meet the Lord Jesus in the air. And those of us who are alive, we shall what? We shall all be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord Jesus in the air. And so shall we ever be with him. What a consolation. But I want to say to you today, dear listening friends, if the Lord Jesus Christ comes today and you have not given your heart and your life to him, you will be left right here and not. Climate change will get worse, and so the heat will get worse. Money will get scarce. You will have to take, you will have to take the mark of the beast in your in your on your forehead in order to buy buy food. And all of these uh, computer technologies that have taken over the world today is a prelude to the coming of the Lord Jesus. And so, if you do not know Jesus Christ today, I beg you to take him now. And I want to tell you something. The day is coming when all the, all the houses and all the cars and all the bridges and all the, all the swimming pools and all of these luxuries will be melted with a falling heat. They will no longer be there. And sometimes, as individuals, we spend all of our lives accumulating all the things of this world and completely forgetting the person of Jesus Christ. For the Lord himself shall descend from the heavens with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Do you want to be with the Lord? My friends, do you want to be with the Lord? Every single thing that earth has will come to an end. Every single thing that earth possesses will come to an end. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that there will be a new heaven and there will be a new earth. For the former things are passed away. The word of God tells us that when Jesus Christ comes, there will be no more sorrow. There will be no more pain. There will be no more sickness. There will be no more diseases. There will be no more agonies. There will be no more policemen. There will be no judges. There will be no lawyers. Why? Because there is no sin in that new Jerusalem. In that new heaven. And in that new world. You know, some years ago, I lost my young wife to cancer. And even until today, it touches my heart. Because why? She, she I believe she died knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. But if, if, if we were in heaven, No. And ever sometimes I I 
I live in anticipation that one of these days I will see her again. And I know this speaks also to Sister Williams and her family. And you can only see Brother Williams again if your heart is given over to Jesus Christ. Because there's going to be a new heaven. There's going to be a new earth. And God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is going to be the light of glory. Why not take Jesus today? And I come to the final lesson, and that is the comfort. Verse 18 says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I pray today that the death of Brother Williams, it is not going to be a comforting experience. But I pray today that just to know that he is in the very arms, he's in the very presence of the Lord, will bring comfort and healing to the family. And that all of these beautiful children and grandchildren that he was part of, that they will all find that, that comfort in Jesus Christ. For I want to reiterate as I close. It is an excellent feeling to leave this world with a heart that is comforted. And so, if you think Brother Williams will be dispersed somewhere and left up at Glen Hill to, to, to rot and to decay and, 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 and to return to ash. I want to remind you that Jesus Christ is coming again and those who die in Christ shall be risen in Christ. Those who are alive when the Lord Jesus Christ comes will all be caught up together to meet the Lord Jesus in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. I pray today that you will comfort someone. I pray that you will comfort friends on the road. I pray that you will comfort that woman who is by the side of the road and uh, that old lady as he, as he used to do his legacy, that you will help someone along the way. May the family be a far better family even as they move on without the man in their life. I pray today that if there is any clear who have not yet given their heart and their life to Jesus Christ, that you will do so now before it is eternally too late. May God bless you. I want to take this opportunity to call in the family, the children, the in-laws, all the families of the deceased to stand as we, we will offer a word of prayer. So we ask you to stand please. Dear God, and merciful Father, we thank you for calling home our brother. We thank you for giving him that extended opportunity to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. Now he has gone. He has moved on to a new place. And we are reminded by the word of God, blessed are they who are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. We believe that he will be there. And dear God and Father, we pray for his wife and his children, his grandchildren, his stepchildren, his in-laws, 
and all of those who are associated with him. We pray, oh God, that there would be a more united family unit. We pray, oh God, that the family will stick together. We pray, oh God, that if there is any in the family who have not yet given the heart and their lives to Jesus Christ, will do so before it is too late. Because it will be a grand reunion in glory when husbands and wives and children and grandchildren and great-grands and great-great-grands will meet. And so we pray for this family as they will have to go through their, their sorrows and their, and their struggles without this dear brother. But we are confident that there is hope in God. Continue to bless the family again. Everyone, for Christ's sake. Where you see the place? At this time, I turn you over back to our dear brother. Praise the Lord. Let us all stand as we say in a bye with me as we're about to move out. Let us all stand as we say in a bye with me. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, praise the Lord.
you. Thank you for each and every one who come along and to make our brother outgoing a joyful one today. We have no need to be sorrowful. No need at all. So,
Yeah, the house. <laughs>
Miss Mama? Wait, wait. 
Jesus, we pray the same all of those songs. Jesus, we made it all. Everybody, we to your program, and we sing together. Jesus, we made it all. <laughs>
when we all get to heaven. What a day that will be. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing His mercy and His grace. Okay, well, you well, choose one and, and we'll... you miss me. Don't go searching. I need to go find me. I need to go here from me.
but they're wrong. You move. No, but they're wrong. Why should I feel such my
swing, oh, they attack. They must swing, oh, they attack. that new heaven with our Lord. We pray, oh God, that as uh, the wife and uh, the, her family and the rest of the children will go back to their places of abode, that they will put their trust in God. And for all of us who would have to go to our respective homes, 
take us to our homes in safety, O God. And may our dear brother's soul continue to rest in eternal peace. For Christ's sake. Amen. We just come to say Oh, God. 